Okay, so in FP2 Chapter 5, we are looking at matrix algebra and just wanted to point out a few different things about this. First of all, anything to do with matrices, which are 3 by 3 matrices, that's only covered in A2, so it's only 2 by 2 for AS. And of course, it is absolutely essential that you have studied matrices and linear transformations from Core Pure 1 before this chapter, because really this should be called like further matrix algebra. It's kind of like the same stuff, but just going a little bit deeper and a bit further with this. So well, this is all concerning itself, mainly to begin with anyway, with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now eigenvalues and eigenvectors, I'm going to try and teach you about what they are by actually showing you these four different images that we've got here. And basically what I want you to do is pause the video and have a look at these four linear transformations of the Bison Maths logo. And I want you to try and think, what do eigenvalues and eigenvectors appear to tell us about the transformation? So let me just tell you a little bit more before I actually then um, ask you to think about this individually. The original image is obviously the unaltered Bison Maths logo. And then there has been this transformation that has been applied to it, the 1012. And I want you to think, I've, I've labelled in this sort of purple, this is the eigenvector 1, 0, and I've labelled in green the eigenvector 1, 1, and then we've got these eigenvalues here. And you've also got the same for this one. So pause the video looking at these two and see if you can think about what might be going on. And then also have a look at these two and pause the video and see if you can think about what might be an eigenvalue and what might be an eigenvector. Okay, so let's start off by having a look at this one that we've got here. Now, just want to point out that the eigenvectors are not where the i and j vectors have gone to. So remember how we used to say, oh, the i vector has become 1, 0, and the j vector has become 1, 2. Clearly, that's not the, both of these are the same. So this eigenvector, which is 1, 0, happens to be the same as this. But the second eigenvector is 1, 1, which is not the same as this. So looking at this diagram, I think if you just see what has happened to the Bison Maths logo, lots of things have kind of moved places, but there's something interesting about this purple part that we've got here. Every single point that is along this purple line here, and actually on the backwards part of this vector, but everything that's along this line, you can see that it's actually not moved location at all. So what I mean by that is the purple line is at the bottom of the S on the logo. And actually when it's transformed, there's the letter S there. It is still on that bottom part of the S. And you can see my eyebrow here is in exactly the same place. Of course, the origin will be in the same place. But again, over here, the bottom part of the B in both the original and the transformed image has not changed at all. So there's something going on here that anything along this uh, eigenvector 1, 0, because the eigenvalue is 1, it hasn't changed where it is at all. Now let's have a look about this second part, this eigenvector 1, 1, and thinking about how that has changed. Now it is 1, 1, it could equally have been minus 1, minus 1 as well. So it's actually talking about everything that is along this whole line here. And what appears to have happened is that everything along that line has stayed in the same line, but it has just moved its location. So let's have a look at this part, because I think it's a bit easier to see. If you look at this bit, which is the top of the part T, it is still on the same line, but it has just gone twice as far away. So this top part of the T is where the bottom part of the T is where this bottom T is. It's just kind of stretched up. Now, that's not true for other letters, because look, here is M but actually M isn't in a straight line. It's kind of gone in a different direction. So it hasn't had that kind of the sense of something being in exactly the same place in the same way. Now let's see if that idea holds up with this second diagram that we've got here. So again, this part, this eigenvector that we've got, which is one zero, could have been going backwards as minus one zero as well. It has an eigenvalue of one. So everything along that line is completely fixed in place and has not changed. Whereas this eigenvector, which is minus one, two, I'm referring to this one that we've got here, you can see the same thing. It's sort of running alongside that left-hand part of the N. It is still running along that left-hand part of the N, but it has stretched up and it's moved away from the origin by a scale factor of two because of that eigenvalue that we've got there. And just like I said before, that is not true of other letters. M is here previously, and after the transformation, it is in a different way. So it's not on that same path. It's not on the same eigenvector that we have 
have there. Now, I put these two together because they have some things in common with each other. These two also have some things in common with each other. And it's because we've got some negative eigenvalues. This eigenvalue here is negative, and it's produced something quite different in the transformation that we've got for this matrix down here. Now, it does say Bison maths in this sort of and in this clockwise direction, but in the other one, it's got Bison maths in an anti-clockwise direction. So there's definitely some kind of flipping that has been going on here. Well, let's observe the two eigenvectors uh, that we've got for this one. So this eigenvector, which is 1, 0, has now been have an eigenvalue of minus 2. So everything that was along here on the Bison Maths logo originally, let's have a look at the part that's directly underneath the S. It is still directly underneath the S on that same line, but it has been multiplied by minus 2. So that distance, which was whatever it is, is now going to be in the, the same line, but it's in the opposite direction because it's negative, and it's twice as long like this. So you can have negative eigenvalues. It kind of corresponds to some kind of flipping that we've got here. And then this is really interesting. This one's quite hard to see. But if you look at the n, and I'm going to just try and draw this on. If you look at the n that we've got here, part of the n, this part here, is on the line. And if I look at the other n, which I'm going to have to draw backwards like this, it is also exactly on the line in the same place. So this eigenvector of minus 1, 3, it's minus 1, 3 like this. It doesn't correspond with the grid, but don't worry about that. Everything that is along that line there is in exactly the same place, even though there has been in some flipping and stretching and things, everything along that line is in the same place. And that's because the eigenvalue there is 1, meaning everything there has not changed. Now, our last one that we've got here has got some rather weird looking eigenvalues. I'm just going to quickly tell you though, this eigenvalue that we have here, this is a positive eigenvalue and this is a negative eigenvalue. If you do 1 minus the square root of 5, you obviously get a negative number. So let's begin by having a look at this purple one. This part here, which is running in between the t and the h, it is still running in between the t and the h, even though there has been something flipping on that it's become h and t. So this vector, this eigenvector of 1 plus root 5, 2, is being stretched by a scale factor of 1 plus root 5 over 2, and everything along that line is sort of fixed in place, but just being stretched out. And then the same for this green one that we've got here. This is a negative eigenvalue. You can see how this part that's running in between the E and the N of the bison word, or the bison name I should say, is still running in between the E and the N, but it has flipped direction and got shorter. Now the reason it's flipped direction and got shorter is because first of all it's negative, which will flip the direction, but it's got shorter because I think if you calculate this it's about 0 0.6 something, and obviously 0 0.6 is less than 1, so it has shrunk down. So what am I trying to really demonstrate with all of this stuff here? Well, let's answer this question that we've got. What do eigenvalues and eigenvectors appear to tell us about the transformation? So I'm going to say here, the eigenvectors, the eigenvectors are those lines where points remain along that line. So what I mean by that is here, everything that's on that point of the Bison Maths logo from the B to the S, it is still remaining on that same line after the transformation. And the same thing for this green part that we've got is the same for all of those. So we now just need to say what the eigenvectors are. The eigenvectors, uh, sorry, the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors are those lines where points remain along that line. And the eigenvalues tell us how much the points are scaled along that line. Now these things are usually interesting. They usually use eigenvalues and eigenvectors in practical contexts because if you have a lot of information with a lot of noise, what I mean by that is, let's have a look at one of these diagrams that we've got, maybe this one here. Noise is gonna be where there's things that are kind of getting in the way of everything that's happening. Everything along this part here seems to have some kind of strong correlation. We would want to maybe focus all of the data in a particular kind of a particular kind of line to get rid of some of the noise in the data. And eigenvectors and eigenvalues kind of tell you, you know, where is the part 
where everything can all be sort of like pushed onto that one sort of axis. Kind of hard to explain where they get used, but I think the geometric use is definitely going to be the most sort of relevant one for us. Now, if you want to be able to try the matrix visualizer that I've been using for all of this, these four images that we've got here, you can go to this website here and you can try them out yourself by uploading your own images and seeing what all of these different things are. So in the next video, I'm going to do some more formal discussion about eigenvalues and eigenvectors of 2x2 two two matrices, as well as some examples and trying to tell you a little bit more about what they are and how to calculate them.